Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Um, listen, on TikTok I share my domestic violence story in pieces, but here on YouTube I am going to share the story in its entirety. Okay, so make sure you like the video, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe and click that bell so you can get the notifications. So let's get into it. On June 1st, 2021, my life was almost taken away from me by my ex-husband. So that morning, I was asleep and I was dreaming about God. And in my dream, I was saying, hey, God, how you doing? Like, I'm trying to talk to him because I can see him in my dream. But God is like, no, 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 get up. It's not me. And so when I get up, I look to the um, the left side of me. And it is a, a demonic spirit standing over my husband. But it's dressed in all white. But you can see the arms was black and the face, the face was black. And so I immediately got up and I started praying. Keep me safe because I could feel the danger. I could, I could feel it, you know, and I saw it. So I got on my knees and started praying. And my ex-husband jumped up. He jumped up. And he started acting crazy let's stick a pen right here we had just came home from new orleans um we went to new orleans for my birthday my birthday was may 28th also we was not arguing we were was nothing going on we had a wonderful trip but i asked god to i fasted for my birthday and i asked god for 28 to be a very spiritual year for me okay Let's keep going. He got the knife because we kept a knife in our room for like safety. We didn't we didn't have a gun. So we had a knife. He got the knife and um he tried to cut his throat. And I just looked at him and I was like, What is going on? You know, like what's going on? And I got quiet. I I, I just got quiet and I just was like, let me go. Because, like, let me keep moving. Because this wasn't his first time trying to kill himself in front of me. And I was just like, let me keep going. This is my first day of work. I'm trying to stay focused. Another thing is, my husband was a sole provider. So this is my first job since the pandemic. The pandemic happened in, what, 2019 or 2020? Well, I didn't have a job. And this was my first job getting paid good money, working 40 hours since the pandemic. So I'm just, in my mind, I'm like, the devil is trying to stop me from whatever is ahead of me, right? So I'm getting Adam and Bella together. Those are my kids. And me and Bella, we go in the bathroom. And I sit down. I'm trying to get better. I'm, I'm multitasking. He come in that bathroom. And remember, I told you I was being quiet because I didn't want to upset him even more. I didn't know what he was going through. He woke up like this. And I didn't want to upset any anymore, so I just I just was being quiet. So he came in there, and he was like, you ain't going to say nothing to me. Got the knife, started coming towards my face, trying to cut me. And I'm just like, I'm looking at him, but he's he's not. The knife is not cutting my face. So then this is God again. I know, I know God is real. I know that I have angels guarding my life. He stopped and he walked, he walked out. Like he walked out the bathroom. I'm gonna show y'all my bathroom because it is very small. I'm in this tiny space getting attacked. My daughter's in between my legs. The knife is like, moving really fast and all I could do was look because I knew if I fought back I would have lost my life honestly you know people always say what well, would you know you would do this you would do that and I'm like if I would have fought back I would have been dead but God gave me this stillness this quietness because to keep me safe just to keep me safe so he stopped and he just walked out and I got up, put my pants up 
nothing. Got Bella. I don't have on no shoes. She don't have on no shoes. Adam is downstairs already dressed and ready because I always getting ready first because he moved very slow. So he downstairs. I say, let's go, Adam. I do a whisper. I say, let's go, Adam. He said he tried to say something to me. I said, and we ran out the house. I didn't. I only my key. Luckily, my keys was by the door, Lord. I grabbed my keys. I didn't have no purse, no phone, no shoes, no nothing. Bella, same thing. And I get, I run out the house. I hear him coming down the stairs. Boo, 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 boo. He's running after us. Luckily, my car has the beep beep where you can unlock it, get in the car. As long as we're in the car safe, doesn't matter. Cut the car on. Of course, he came to the car, kicked the car, banging on the door, cut the car on, back up real quick. Now he's running after the car, throwing his shoes and stuff at the car, throwing whatever he can at the car. So I go to the safest place where I know I can get help and where people know me. And that's Bella Daycare at the time. I had a good relationship with the people at the daycare. I actually worked there uh, for a small period of time. And they know me. My daughter goes there. So when I get there, of course, I am in tears. I'm crying. And I'm, I don't have no shoes. And, and they like, what's going on? I just said nothing. I need to call 911. I need to call my mom. Um, so I called the police. And I said, hey, you know, I told my story. And um, I called my mom. So the police said, hey, I will meet you back there. And I was like, I don't want to go back until y'all say he's not there no more. And um, they came, they went, and then I saw my ring camera. And on my ring camera, my ex-husband is leaving, but he is, like, stabbing the ring camera. Pop, 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 like, destroying property. So when I got back home, I thought everything was destroyed. But luckily, nothing was touched except for the ring camera. Anyways, now the police. Is at the house, and now it's safe for me to come. What did the police do? Nothing. Somebody asked me this on TikTok, and I'm just going to go ahead and let y'all know. They did nothing. At all. At all. Literally. Matter of fact, it was to the point where a police officer pulled me to the side and said, Miss Bracey, you're going to need to get you a gun. Because... There's nothing we can do, honestly. You could try to put a TPO in place, but if there's no address for him and they can't serve him, it won't happen. And most likely, since he tried to kill himself and kill you, they're not going to take him to jail, which they didn't. They're going to try to get him help. Now, the crisis unit called me. Another, another thing. I would say is God chose me to fight this. He did. And I really did try to help my husband at the time. And prior to all of this, I tried to get him counseling. I kept, I tried to keep him in church. I anointed him. I prayed for him. I covered him. I did everything I needed to do as a wife. Honor my husband. I did. Up until this very moment, the crisis unit called me. Because whenever somebody is trying to kill themselves or walking around with a weapon, because he still has a knife in his hand, because you can see it on the ring camera, and trying to hurt others, they send out the crisis unit. Hey, can you please let us know where he's at? I don't know. He probably still went to work. Um, But I'll call him. I called. I said, Darius, the crisis unit is going to come to your job. I gave them your address. You need help. And they're going to come talk to you. And I really would like for you to go with them. Up until this very moment, up until that very moment, I was still honoring my husband. Because he need help. So, boom. Like I said, it was my first day of work. and. Now, Bella's in a safe place. I kept her at daycare. The daycare people, God bless them. They were great. 
they made sure Bella had everything she, down to her shoes. When I picked her up, she had her shoes. So now I had to handle my business. It was my first day of work and I was the lead camp counselor. So I needed to be there. Um, I get to work and I told my mom, I said, mom, I'm going to quit because I said all that to uh, my husband at the time. And he was still like, um, I'm on my way to the job. I'm going to get them next. Boom, boom. Like he, yes, he's still going. He is still going. So I had to go to work. My mom said, you have to go to work. You need to protect the people at your job and you need to protect your job. I was like, no, mom. I need to quit. I can't drag this on behind me. I don't need people to know me like this. Like, she was like, just do it. So I did. I went and luckily had a relationship with this lady that already worked there. And she was like, what's wrong? And I was like, I ain't it. I was so embarrassed. I was like, my husband just tried to kill me. And that's why. I couldn't come today and he said he on his way up here next and I started crying at this point and then she was like oh no 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 let me go get your supervisor the supervisor at the time and she go gets him and he was like why are you not at work like joking and playing around and then the lady she was like mm -mm. we need to talk and I was crying I was like yeah my husband just tried to kill me and he's on his way up here next and they like wow and I'm like I understand that y'all don't want me to work here no more I understand if I'm putting y'all at danger and I'm just crying so my supervisor was like call the police let's get a um let's get things in place here make a police report we got you. He said, go handle your business. Everything is okay here. And I will give you a call. <clears throat> so I was like, Lord, I'm going to lose my job. I am. And I had money saved up. And I was like, okay, well, I'm about to use all my savings. I'm already thinking. The next day come, I get a call from my job. and he says to me, um, don't worry about coming in this week. We're going to pay you for the whole week. Get yourself together. We want your, you, we want you to be well when you're at work. And I cried. And I said, okay, full pay. That's the story. Okay. I survived. I was still being blessed. But after everything had settled, I had to heal. That was a very, very hard healing healing process for me I went through so many ups and downs highs and lows and like I said this is in 2021 I had just turned 28 and I asked God for this to be a spiritual year for me so it's a lot of pruning also in this my um 28th year we get in we get in what mid-year six months in God tells me to quit everything. God tells me to come off of social media. But it was a, it was a, indeed a spiritual year. I'm big on healing. I am big on recovering. I am big on titles because I was a victim. I was. I was a victim. Now I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor and I'm here to tell my story and I want to help a lot of women that has went through a domestic violence situation or any type of violence, any type of abuse. I already do it with children. Follow my Instagram at Agape Collaborative because I already do it with children. But then after this happened to me, I knew God wanted me to do more, but at first he healed me. You know, he healed me because I honestly, I couldn't even talk about it without crying and being emotional because almost losing your life is life changing. And I kept asking God, why would somebody want to hurt me that I loved and that 
loved me. Why? You know, so I've dealt with that a lot too. But listen, share this with somebody. Subscribe to the channel because now it's time to heal. We go through things, but we can heal too. And you can beat your trauma. I most definitely was traumatized. And I do still move with caution. However, I still love, I still hope, I still pray, I still, I'm happy. God is still blessing me. And I will get into all the other parts later about what happened when I quit, who, who, am, who am I now, and all these wonderful things, because God has truly rewritten my story. Truly, truly rewritten my story. So I love y'all. Thank you for listening.